All right, so the discussion is uh, 636 exclusive time of functions. Uh, so we are now a single threaded CPU, meaning that we can only execute uh, one thing at a time. Uh, we couldn't do two things uh, at the same time. Uh, uh, we're executing some functions. Each function has a unique ID between 0 and n minus 1, so they are, they are possibly uh, n different functions. We store logs in timestamp order that describe when a function is entered or exited. So this uh, logs and logs as input is already sorted in terms of uh, timestamps. And the format of the log is uh, ID, start or end, um, indicate, indicator, uh, timestamp. So it's sorted by the timestamp. We have example 0 column start column 3 means that the function with ID 0 started at the beginning of timestamp 3. 1 column and column 2 means that the function with ID 1 ended at the end of timestamp. So each timestamp has a unit of lens, has a unit lens of 1. And depends on whether we are starting or end, it's the, the number, the timestamp. Uh, number here actually indicates uh, either left or right side of that number um, on the timeline. Uh, so uh, we need to calculate uh, the function's exclusive time. Um, that's the number of units of time spent in this function. This does not include any recursive calls to child functions. Uh, just the main function, just the function itself and the um, the time that it spends on the child function belongs to the fun child function itself, uh, not the parent function. And the, the CPU is single threaded, uh, it's already say, say, uh, stated here. Uh, we can only execute one function at a given time. Um, return the ex exclusive time for each function sorted by their function ID. So if there are uh, so we should return the time for function one, 0, time for function 1, time for function 2, and so on. Uh, in, as a result, it's a list of uh, uh, integer numbers. The example, we have uh, two functions. Uh, one starts at 0, ends at uh, 6. The other one starts with uh, 2, ends at 5. So the blue one, uh, that it, it's actually a child call, a function call for the uh, sort of a brownish color one here and the, the exclusive time for the child one is easy that's uh, 5 minus 2 plus 1 uh, because we are at the start of 2 end of 5 so it's uh, it's 4 unit of time for the uh, function ID 1 and for the parent one uh, we have uh, 2 units in the beginning and uh, 1 unit of time in the end so that's uh, 2 plus 1 equal to 3 so to realize the 3 here uh, that's uh, basically the one that uh, the, the when we see a child function is being called with we, uh, we uh, calculate how much time we already spend on this fun the function power function ID 0, that's 2, that's the difference between the two start time and once the uh, child function is um, finished we can resume the calculation for the uh, parent function we record that uh, timestamp which is the end of 5 here and uh, the we just add another 6 minus 5 plus 1 uh, so 6 minus 5 uh, that's 1 so 2, 2 plus 1 is 3 here so that's the example and here we have some nodes uh, n is greater than 1 meaning that uh, we always have uh, at least the one function to uh, calculate to work on so this return is not going to be an empty list it's uh, also the inputs uh, this uh, the logs has to has have at least the two elements in it Two functions of own start and end at the same time. Um, I think it's uh, uh, obvious because we are single threaded, so there's no way that we can start or end at the same time for any two functions. Um, functions will always log when they exit, so that's just guarantee us when we're processing the log, uh, when we see an end, 
uh, it, it has to close the function that uh, started uh, right before it and uh, that's just uh, what this third thing is saying so if we use a stack to keep track of the uh, unfinished uh, functions um, when we see a closed statement we can just look at the, the top of the stack uh, we know that uh, this is uh, definitely gonna close the one on top of the stack so uh, let's just work through this example here very quickly um, so what we will have is uh, we need to return the uh, exclusive time for these two functions they are initially uh, to be all zero uh, time span and because we are a CPU we just um, use a stack to keep track of the functions uh, call stack so at the beginning we see this zero coming here uh, we put that uh, function ID onto the top of the stack and uh, the second item, set, second log item comes in that uh, we know that we have another function coming in with ID 1, it starts at 2 so we uh, lock in the time we spend on this function 0 here which is uh, uh, the difference between these two start time uh, that's 2 minus 0 which is 2 here and then the third log item is uh, the function 1 ended at a 5 so because it's uh, uh, closed we remove this thing we pop this uh, ID 1 from the call stack and just log in the time uh, we get for this function which is 5 here and uh, uh, the then the real last log item we see uh, this uh, function with ID zero has ended at uh, the end of six. So because the previous one ended at the end of five, um, we calculate that difference. That's one. So two plus one is equal to six three, and we also remove this item from the call stack. So uh, alongside from these two. Uh, uh, from this uh, uh, stack and uh, this array, uh, we probably need something to keep track of the previous endpoint, end time. So, uh, so that's that's something we need to keep track of to be able to uh, sort of like uh, uh, resume this calculation here. Uh, so that's all we need. Uh, in terms of uh, time and space complexity. Uh, the call stack is going to be at the most uh, uh, n over two. Uh, that's the worst case if we if we have functions to be you know uh, one calling another, uh, zero calling one, one's calling two within one, two is calling three within two. In that case, we will end up uh, ended up uh, have all uh, m at least uh, all the, the m functions stuck all together right uh, each has unique ID between 0 and n minus 1 yeah that, that's the worst case we will have n items on the call stack uh, that's all the all the function IDs and uh, the time span is just the, the output so we don't calculate this in in terms of the uh, space complexity yeah so the call stack is the space complexity this is the uh, auxiliary uh, data structure we are using. The, the worst case uh, space complexity is uh, just order of n. And this is a constant thing here. The time complexity is just uh, we, we're basically processing the two n logs. So that's uh, order of n. Uh, yeah, so, so the time and space, they are all linear. That's, that's the time and space complexity analysis for this method. Uh, it's basically using a call stack and uh, an array to uh, increment the uh, a number of time we spend on each, each function. Uh, so yeah, let's code this question up. So let's call this uh, f times meaning that the function, the time we spend on each functions 
which is initially to be um, zero, and since we have m such functions, uh, we pre-allocate uh, an array of size n, which is zero to be initial values. Uh, and our call stack is uh, initially to be empty, and uh, now our previous uh, end time uh, it's uh, it's zero in the beginning. So we are processing log of one at a time uh, because it's sorted. So we can just directly iterate all over the logs. Uh, we grab the function ID, the the type of uh, indicator. Uh, just call it type. Type of the the log entry and uh, the function time, the timestamp, um, which is uh, split by the column. And we need to convert the, the uh, we need to convert the, the function ID and timestamp into integers. Uh, so the FID can actually help us to uh, directly go to the entries in the F times to uh, increment the time here because. Uh, where we have functions from 0 to n minus 1, n minus 1 there. Uh, so that's grabbing, basically parsing the logs. If the type is uh, uh, start, uh, what we need to do is to see uh, whether, whether we have some function already on the stack. If that's the case, we are pretty much, uh, uh, you know, processing this this new function ID is going to be uh, mean this new entry means that we are starting a child function, so we should lock in the uh, time in between these two, uh, locking that time spent onto the previous function here. Uh, so we need to check if the stack is empty or not. If it's not empty. Um, the previous function, which is the uh, the ID, is the top of the element, uh, top of the stack here. Um, let's just note that uh, the IDs of uh, uh, function calls. Uh, it's going to be the difference between. Uh, this this time and this time. Mm. So this is not the the issue minus the. Uh, let, let me change this. Yeah, th this this value should be. We should keep track of the previous starting time. Uh, and in the notion that the, when the function is resumed, uh, we just update this function to be um, because this ends at five. We should just update this to be six. And the calculation will be uh, when when the, when the function ends will still be six minus six plus one here. So let's just uh, do a quick change here. Um, previous starting time, so this is starts to be zero here. When the new function kicks in, uh, it starts at two. The difference between f time and the previous start time is two minus zero, which is two. So we lock in uh, two units of time for the top of the uh, for the function that's at top of our stack, which is uh, the function id zero here. So we lock in the time for that function uh, with this line here. And we append the new function ID onto the stack. Uh, then we update this uh, previous function start time to be uh, the start time for this uh, new function 
here. Else means that the type is end, meaning that we are basically closing the most current function call. Uh, the, the ID is going to be the top of the stack, and uh, the time is going to be uh, now. Now, w when we are in the else class, the f time is the uh, the uh, end, end time for that function. The calculation is just uh, the difference and plus one. And uh, we need to increment this by to be f time plus one. And in the end, we just return this uh, uh, array of times. Hmm. Just do a quick check to see if the logic is uh, reasonable. If it's a start, we check if we have unclosed the functions on the stack. If it has, we lock into the time for that function. And then we put the new function ID onto the stack. We update this previous starting time to be the start time of this particular function. If the function ends, uh, if the log is end, uh, we, we pretty much close the uh, top, uh, the, the function that's currently on the top of the stack. And uh, we increment the time by the difference between these two plus one. Uh, because when we're dealing with the start time, it, uh, if we start at zero, or if we start at uh, two, end at five, that's five minus two plus one. So that's what here. And since we are resuming the previous function, uh, which is uh, effectively as if the function it's starting from at the beginning of the uh, end, uh, you know, the end time plus one, uh, and uh, uh, we we already locked in that time, so. Um, yeah, so that, that this would do. Um, yeah, so that's the solo, uh, I think that's the code for this uh, strategy. Let's submit it. No, it's not working. Uh, we got an arrow. F time. Uh, okay, it's uh, I caught this timestamp here. Oh, okay. Actually, f time might be better because the collection is actually called uh, f times. Uh, this time it should work. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this is the question for today. Um,